Hello. Um, so you're welcome to this lecture. I want, we want to um, end with the last part of um, nonlinear autonomous systems. We have already looked at um, uh, some introduction to nonlinear systems. We especially lo looked at the linearization theorem and how you can use it to, um, to find the stability of uh, nonlinear uh, equilibrium points. All right, and you did some exercise on that. Uh, now, the last bit we want to look at is uh, the Apinor functions um, and how we could, we could use that to also find or determine um, the stability of uh, equilibrium point or fixed point for a nonlinear autonomous system. Okay, so um, when we did the linearization um, approach, we realized that the method was deficient in the sense that you could not, for example, when uh, you had cases with purely imaginary eigenvalues, you couldn't use the linearization theorem to draw any conclusions. Okay, so that was um, one of the weaknesses or disadvantages of the linearization theorem. And now we have um, another machinery that we could use. When the linear linearization theorem fails, you could use the Lyapunov functions. All right, and we'll see how, how we apply that. Um, I mean, they all have their weaknesses and strength, but these are the machinery that is available to us at the moment to analyze the stability of nonlinear uh, systems of equations. So we'll look at the Lyapunov functions. Now, the main advantage of this is that you really don't need to know anything about the solution at all. Right, and yet you can discuss the stability of um, the stability of uh, fixed points for the nonlinear system. So that's one of the advantages. We'll start off with um, some motivating example. Okay, so you have a nonlinear system given by this. Um, this system here, uh, zero zero is of course um, you can you can easily check that zero zero is an equilibrium point of the system. If you linearize it using the previous approach, you'll find that the Jacobian matrix uh, is given by this uh, matrix here. And of course, you can easily find the eigenvalues of this. And what you see is that the eigenvalues are plus or minus i. So this is, it has purely imaginary eigenvalues, which means that uh, if we wanted to use the linearization theorem to draw any conclusions about the stability of Zero, 0, we couldn't do it because the theorem, the theorem didn't cover that. Okay. So we want, to, um, we want to go through this process that is in a way to motivate the, uh, the theorem for Lyapunov functions. All right? So that is the main reason why we are, um, we are doing this. Good. So even though we can't use the linearization to do this, let's see how we could do that. If you multiply the first equation here by x and the second by y, uh, you get these two equations. If you add them, you're going to get the third equation here, uh, which you can rewrite as this, right? x squared plus y squared is to the power 1. This is to the power 1 half. If you add them, you get the power three over two, all right? So, so you get this. So we just manipulated this to, you know, equations to come up with this. Now, note that um, if you find the derivative with respect to time of x squared plus y squared, you're gonna get this quantity here, all right? So we have this. Now this is, I mean, twice of this is equal to that. So basically, d dt of x squared plus, plus y squared is equal to um, this quantity, all right, which you get from here. So, so um, and we see that because this is squared and that is squared, um, this is strictly uh, less than zero if you are away from zero, zero, of course, away from the origin. Um, what it means is that the function x squared plus y squared, this combination here, uh, is negative, okay? Now, what does that tell us? Note that this is not a solution. We haven't solved the system at all. We just manipulated the uh, equations and we came up with a function that is somehow related to the nonlinear equation. And then we want to use that to sort of draw some, um, some conclusions about the stability of uh, the equilibrium point zero, zero. 
So here we see that this x squared plus y squared is, um, is less than zero, it's negative. Now, you see that um, that also means that it is a strictly decreasing function, right? The fact that this is you know, less than zero means that it is a decrease, decreasing function. And because of the fact that the function v, that is that's this combination s squared plus y squared, basically measures separation from the origin, this is a sketch of a couple of them, right? If, you know, if V is one, you get a circle of radius one. If V is two, you get a circle of radius root two, and so on, right? So this function V measures a separation from the origin, okay? So if it is decreasing with time, then we can deduce, right? This is a deduction. We deduce that the solution would get closer and closer to the origin as T increases, okay? Again, it is a deduction. We haven't really proved or shown it, but we are saying that if you can come up with a function that looks like this, and the function is decreasing, then you could deduce that the solution to the nonlinear equations themselves, the solution itself, is also decreasing in approaching the origin with time. That is all we have, we have said. Now, in this particular case, it's actually easy to prove that you know, this function goes to zero with time, all right? So if you go back to this, if you let this be v, all right, x squared plus y squared is v, this will be v raised to the power three over two, and you can solve that. So here, so from that equation, you see that the v dt is negative two v raised to the power three over two. You can separate variables and solve for v. When you solve for v, boom, you get this equation here, one over t plus c squared. And you see that as t goes to infinity, v actually goes to zero. As we as we deduced previously, okay. So um, the the above technique, this you know analysis we just did is uh, is often useful basically to establish uh, the equilibrium point whether it is stable or it's not stable. Uh, later we'll see in the theorem whether you can also tell whether it is asymptotically stable, stable or unstable. Okay. And this function, which we have derived, later we'll see that this is, called, this is a Lyapunov function. Uh, we'll define it formally later on. Um, this function can be replaced by, you know, similar functions with similar properties. If they have a similar kind of properties, you could use them uh, to help you make these kind of deductions and deduce that if V is going to zero in time, then maybe the equilibrium point there is a stable equilibrium point or asymptotically stable. Okay, so basically this is a motivating example. We'll get into the theorem itself later. All right. Um, now we'll look at a few uh, definitions uh, before we actually tackle the theorem. So if you have a nonlinear uh, equation, know that this equation you can you can break it down into this. This basically means you have x1 dot x1 the x1 the t is equal to f1, but f1 has is a function of these, right? And so on. Okay, where the f part is partial derivative are assumed to be continuous in some open uh, domain, okay, which is an Rn containing the origin. Um, v here, you know, is a scalar continuous function which is defined such that v at zero is equal to zero. All right. Now, uh, these are some useful definitions that we'll use later on, and you will probably come across uh, some of them uh, later so in some places. Okay, where V here is said to be positive definite in a domain omega if and only if uh, V of X is positive away from the origin. Okay, if X is not zero and V is strictly positive, you say it's positive definite. If V is, um, v is said to be positive semi-definite, right, if it is positive or equal to zero, where the equality occurs at certain points, right? So it could be zero at some points, but it is positive away from those points. Then we say that it is positive semi-definite. Uh, it is negative definite if you just reverse the inequality, the inequalities, you get negative definite and get negative semi-definite. Okay? I will look at uh, some examples in my next in my next lecture. Um, in the next lecture, I will look at a few examples of this and I will move on. Okay.